Praxis, Practice and Practice Architectures. Here we're going to introduce the ideas of Kemi et al in their 2014 book Changing Practice, Changing Education. And the title of that work is significant because it sums up the author's central concern, which is to look closely at education, what it is, what it isn't, what it's for, and how we might study and shape it. And they argue that education has outcomes that are of significance for the whole world as well as for individual participants within it. And that the fundamental purpose of education is to help people to live well in a world worth living in. So shaping both our individual and our collective destinies. And we do this as educators, it is argued, by developing our learners' ability to say things well, to do things well, and to relate well to other people and to the world at large. And it's really this trio of things that help us to progress towards that overriding purpose or project of the whole undertaking of education. The question that then arises, of course, is what do we mean by living well and how do we define a world worth living in? And once we've decided on that, how do we achieve those things? Now, these, of course, are very big questions that concern individual students and teachers, the institutions and sectors within which they work and regional, national and international governance. Now, what's proposed here as a broad response to these difficult, big questions is that to enable people to live well in a world worth living in, education must take action that is morally committed and informed. And this is one definition of the word praxis, that is something that should happen in the world. However, the authors do acknowledge that there is an alternative and a broader definition of praxis, which is not what should happen, that kind of morally, and inf uh, morally committed and informed kind of action, but what actually does happen, which is rather different, and is in fact history-making action that has moral, social and political consequences, both for good and for bad. And it's that bad potential um, or difficult uh, aspect of praxis that chemists suggest is why we need to look more carefully and with a critical eye at our own practices, what we do, what we say and how we relate to others and to the world in general. And only through doing this can we achieve praxis in the best sense of the word with those positive outcomes that we might aspire to. So what we need, they argue, is to shed light on what is hidden in plain view in our practices. And what they argue is that this will increase our ability to achieve excellent outcomes for individuals and for the whole world. So how do we go about doing this very ambitious thing? Well, let's focus again on that trio of practices that we mentioned at the outset, saying, doing, and relating and look at them more analytically. Now of course these practices don't happen in a vacuum but within particular systems. So we do things in the material economic world, we relate to things in the social political world and we say things in the cultural discursive world. We do this using objects in space and time, using power and solidarity in society and using language in semantic space. These spaces and systems within which we engage in practice are called by Chemis et al practice architectures and they ask us to interrogate those architectures asking how we are simultaneously enabled and constrained by them, how we are led by them and how we might at the same time shape and influence them. And if we do this, we are not simply looking at our own practices, but also how we might change the world in which they are played out in order to make it better. So, for example, the rooms in which we teach, the physical resources to which we have access and how they are shared out and arranged, the timetables we work to, 
the rules, policies and hierarchies of our institutions and governments and the distribution of power that those structures determine and also the language to which we have access and how we use it both to empower and to disempower our learners. All of these are legitimate and productive, not to say vital, subjects for our study. This broadening of focus from our actual practices to the practice architectures in which they are played out, it is suggested, helps us to reimagine the world of teaching, learning and leading and to build new learning cultures, to think about how practice makes history and to help us in the quest for good praxis, that action that is morally committed and informed and that helps us in that fundamental project of education to help people to live well in a world worth living in.